So the Stranger of Paradise DLC Different Future has been out for a bit now and I wanted to talk about the story and how it connects to other Final Fantasy properties, namely Dissidia, and how it's honestly incredibly interesting. Also, just for future notice, uh, the word Lufenian shows up in my script a lot, but that's surprisingly a difficult word to transition to. So I'm just gonna refer to the Lufenian as Luferigno. So the story starts off with a rogue Luferigno attempting to wipe out the dimension that Jack and his crew are in, in an effort to stop the cycle Jack created and reclaim their control. A Moogle discovers this plan and finds Jack to warn him and ask for help. Unbeknownst to the Moogle, the Emperor from Final Fantasy II has followed her to Jack's dimension for two reasons. The allure of the crystal Luferigno Noah is using, but also because of Jack. The Emperor reveals that he knows of a Garland and questions if Jack is the future version of the Garland he knows. After a brief battle, the Emperor retreats and it's up to Jack and his crew to stop Luferigno from enacting her plan. On the way to Luferigno, <laughs> the Moogle mentions to Jack that she comes from a world where a myriad of different warriors came together to free that dimension of its shackles. Does that sound like anything you know of? Freaking Dissidia, which is awesome. The Moogle mentions knowing Garland from that world, but she's unsure if Jack is the same one. Eventually you reach Luferigno, beat her and Omega's ass. Jack then tells her to shut the fuck up, which was honestly badass. <laughs> shut the fuck up. Shut up, bitch. Jack then refuses to take the crystal that is left behind by the Lufenian and asks the Moogle to return him and his friends to their world to continue the cycle of training the Warriors of Light, which the Moogle obliges. Now this part is a little bit confusing because the exact same cutscene we just watched plays out again, but this time the Emperor shows up and merges with the crystal leading to a boss battle. Now this part is honestly hilarious because the Emperor gets his ass kicked, loses all of his powers, and gets tossed through a portal back to his home world. He gets jobbed out so hard, and it's honestly really pathetic, <laughs> but in a really funny way. Any forces he controlled before have left him. I sense no magic at all. He's just a regular person now, Kubo. Good. Starting again from the bottom uh. might improve his mood. Shut up, bitch! Afterwards, Jack ends up merging with the crystal. The Moogle mentions that this is the proper path that needs to occur in order for the correct ending of the story to play out. The Moogle then sends Jack back to his throne room to continue the cycle of training the Warriors of Light. A few battles ensue with Jack being the victor, but in a twist that I didn't see coming, the player is given control of THE Warrior of Light as you battle Garland in what will be the final fight in the cycle, leading Jack and his friends and their journey to be wiped away, but in return, Light is restored and the world is at peace. In one final cutscene, it is then revealed that Jack is indeed the Garland from the Dissidia games who helped free that world as well. For the warrior who crossed time and fought alongside the others is you. And though you may forget your trials, you too are owed a debt of gratitude for seeing this journey through to its end. Thank you. And that is the end of this story, the ending leading directly into the events and ending of Final Fantasy 1, and truly feels like the end of this story. So again, that feels like a very definitive ending that leads directly into Final Fantasy. So if they were to somehow do a sequel in the future or DLC, I don't think Jack Garland and his crew of friends are gonna be involved because technically their story is done and Jack's continues in Dissidia. So should the game get a sequel, things are kind of up in the air. Who do they focus? on. They're not going to focus on the Emperor. <laughs> he got his ass beat in this DLC. <laughs> He's depowered. He got sent back to his home world. So I don't think focusing on him would be a very good idea. So there's tons of options that you could pull from from previous Final Fantasy games to focus on. But again, that's all going to be dependent upon whether or not Stranger of Paradise in its DLCs continue to actually sell well. They seem to be selling pretty decently for the type of game that they are. But again, they're not God of War Ragnarok selling 11 million copies 
copy since the release. So I just thought it'd be kind of fun to do a recap of that story because of how interesting it is and how it links to Dissidia and how the Moogle is from the world of Dissidia. And it, I honestly hope that we get more Dissidia games. They may not be arena-based fighters. Maybe they will take the approach that I had in a few of my older videos where I turned them into, uh, you know, 3v3, 2d, 3d style fighters. Who knows? But the world of Dissidia, the world of Stranger of Paradise are now connected. It's all very interesting to me. And I really want to see this continue further because it's very intriguing to me. This is the kind of stuff <laughs> that gets me excited. So hopefully crossing my fingers, this game sells well and uh, they can make another one because I really want to see where they go with this story. Now, with that being said, that is pretty much the video. I am Curious Corduroy. Leave your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. Did you guys play through the DLC? Is watching this video your first interaction? with the different future DLC. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And should they make a sequel in the future, what character do you want to see them focus on for the next Stranger of Paradise? I will see you guys in the next video. Please remember to always be excellent to one another.